It's Sunday, 19th of January, and we are awaiting SpaceX's launch escape test in just under 17 minutes and eight seconds. The test today is to demonstrate the effectiveness of our launch escape system. Now we are currently go for launch from pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for joining us. I'm John Isbrucker, Falcon Principal Integration Engineer here at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. And I'm Marie Lewis with NASA Public Affairs. The purpose of today's test is to demonstrate Crew Dragon's ability to safely fly astronauts away from danger and separate from the Falcon 9 rocket during an in-flight emergency. Now SpaceX's launch escape system is a first of its kind with its eight Super Draco thrusters built directly into Dragon to push the spacecraft away from Falcon 9 in case of an emergency. You can think of it as a rocket on top of a rocket. Now in order to test our launch escape system, which is integral to the Dragon spacecraft you see in front of you on the video, we will be simulating an emergency with Falcon 9 at about 84 seconds into flight. This could be a few seconds early or late, as Dragon waits for Falcon 9 to reach a specific velocity before initiating the escape. Now before Dragon separates and fires its Super Draco engines, it will command Falcon 9 to shut down its engines as part of the escape sequence. Because Falcon 9 is then unpowered, we are expecting the launch vehicle to fully break up at some point, which should create some particularly interesting views. For sure. Now it's not every day you get to see something like that, so we're gonna do our best to bring it to you live as it happens. But a reminder, with the weather and the clouds, we're gonna to try to find the views that are best. And to be very clear, this is all part of today's test. Within the context of this test, the views that you will see will allow us to validate the effectiveness of our launch escape system. And we're hoping for some very exciting views, but the whole point of the test today is the next step in our multi-year efforts to fly astronauts again from U.S. soil. It's part of NASA's commercial crew program, and it's a partnership we have with SpaceX and Boeing. But this is not the first time we are putting Dragon's launch escape system to the test. If you remember back in 2015, SpaceX's paddleboard test demonstrated Dragon's ability to escape from the Falcon 9 in the event of an emergency on the pad before liftoff. And the Super Dracos in the launch escape system on today's Dragon capsule you see there were successfully static fired this past November. And in addition to the test that you just mentioned, SpaceX also flew a full uncrewed demonstration mission to and from the International Space Station last year with its Crew Dragon vehicle. Now this was a full end-to-end -end test of the entire Crew Dragon system, validating that our upgraded Crew Dragon spacecraft could safely dock with the space station. And in addition, our team has conducted over 700 tests on just the Super Draco system alone Really looking forward to seeing those perform in today's flight. Absolutely. And if all goes well today, the next big milestone will be to launch astronauts, as we mentioned, to the International Space Station. That's part of what we call Demo 2 or Demonstration Mission 2. Now we're currently just inside of T minus 13 minutes and 45 seconds and counting down. Now weather's been a watch item the last couple of days with rough seas, sustained winds in the recovery area. We had to scrub yesterday. We're also still listening. They're evaluating constantly the weather in the splashdown area right now as we're doing the webcast. Now we do have a six hour window today in case we need to wait for better weather or less cloud cover. We've obviously used two and a half hours of it already, but right now we think this is our best opportunity. Now if the weather does not cooperate today, we are preserving tomorrow as a potential backup. Now as a reminder again, this is not a typical launch. We're purposely testing Dragon's escape system under the most extreme conditions. So while we want everything to go right today, we are prepared if everything goes wrong. And if, it, if that does happen, that's the whole point. This is exactly why we test. We want to see if there's any potential issues, and we want them to happen now so we can address those before we put astronauts on board. And speaking of astronauts, we have NASA's Daryl Nail at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. That's where the test is taking place this morning. And he has more about what those very first astronauts assigned to fly Crew Dragon will be paying special attention to this morning. Daryl? 
Yeah, good morning, John and Marie. It's a pretty nice day here at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. You can see behind us here on the lawn, some of the media have gathered to shoot this launch. And of course, the countdown clock, the iconic one, they're counting 12 minutes until launch. As you mentioned, the first crew members assigned to fly Crew Dragon are NASA astronauts Doug Hurley and Bob Behnken. And they have the most, you could say, invested in the outcome of this test flight. Right now, they are just a few miles away from launch pad 39A, which is just behind my left shoulder here. They're in the SpaceX firing room inside the launch control center where they will closely monitor today's flight abort test. Now, right now, they've been training up until this point, training hard with NASA and SpaceX so they can understand every aspect of Dragon's systems, their spacesuits, and how to respond in a variety of potential emergency scenarios, including an escape from a Falcon 9 rocket in the middle of flight. The end result of that could be an early splashdown in the Atlantic Ocean. Now, both astronauts told us what they will specifically be looking for during today's test flight. I think both of us are really excited that the in-flight abort test is, uh, is about to happen. You know, we kind of view that as the, the graduation exercise like a lot of folks do on the NASA side to make sure that we're really confident that we've got a good plan and good procedures in place for pulling that mission off. And so I'm excited that we're this far and I know once it's behind us, you know, we'll be the, the prime uh, Falcon 9 Crew Dragon crew. What we want to see from this test is just an end-to-end -end success. So, you know, another successful launch of the Falcon 9 and then to see the uh, Super Dracos work. I think that's a really good point. I think getting the NASA team and the SpaceX team on the same page kind of going forward and kind of walking through all the decisions that you have to make for uh, getting ready for this flight, I think, is a, is a big milestone as well because it's the, it's the last launch associated with us before we ride that rocket. Yeah, that's very true. It is. It's kind of the final exam, so it, it's, there's a lot riding on it, but uh, also I think it's a culmination of a ton of work from everybody in NASA and SpaceX to get to this point. I'm just really proud that the team is trying to pull off something so uh, critical from a safety perspective. You know, if we needed to escape off of the rocket to have that system demoed before we would actually use it is, is pretty cool that folks are making the investment to make that happen. We feel really excited about kind of the progress that uh, SpaceX and NASA have made to this point, and this kind of shows us that we're getting really close to our flight. So to see all these capabilities all put together, all the teams together, and to be able to launch this vehicle, it's a, just a huge boost of confidence. Now there's an interesting human side to Doug and Bob's story. They're not just crewmates. But they're also friends who have spent a lot of time together over the years. Both graduated from the same astronaut training class in 2000. Both flew on the space shuttle. Both are married to astronauts, and they were in each other's wedding. John and Marie, back to you. All right, thanks, Daryl. You're taking a live look now. This is inside SpaceX's firing room four. That's where uh, Bob and Doug are sitting today, along with the NASA and SpaceX teams, uh, watching, following along today's test. And this past Friday, they completed what we refer to internally as a dry dress rehearsal. We saw some video of that uh, during Daryl's segment. And this is where the astronauts, along with the SpaceX and NASA teams, walk through those steps um, that they'll take before they get on board for demo two. We saw them suit up, um, and that is really exciting stuff, especially that was the first time we saw them suited up, walking out of the, uh, the astronaut uh, suit up room. And so really looking forward to doing that uh, for demo two. Let's take a quick look now at Crew Dragon. Um, it stands almost 27 feet tall from the bottom of the trunk to the top of the nose cone. And Crew Dragon is composed of two main elements. The capsule, that top portion, is designed to hold crew and pressurized cargo, and it has an unpressurized section known as the trunk that's down below. For today's test, much of the exciting work is going to be done by the Dragon's eight Super Draco engines we talked about built directly into the capsule. Now to give you a sense of power, when fired together, the eight Super Dracos can move the spacecraft a half a mile in seven and a half seconds. So from a standing start, the Super Dracos accelerate the spacecraft to a speed of 436 miles per hour. That's a lot faster than a catapult launch from an aircraft carrier. I know, and it's, it's hard to imagine just moving that fast. I, I was trying to 
uh, get a feel for it. So I did a little math and it's about three times faster than takeoff on a commercial plane, if you can imagine that. Um, in fact, one jetpack assembly, which consists of two Super Dracos, produces more thrust than an F-16 fighter jet at full afterburn. So John, if you were to put that, uh, strap that to your back, you would break the sound barrier in under half a second. <laughs> Not sure you'd want to volunteer for that. I'd probably break something else too. So that gets us through the major test objective today, Dragon separating from the Falcon. Several minutes later, we will deploy drogue parachutes, followed by the four large main parachutes. You'll see the main parachutes partially open at first, if we've got video, then fully open. These will then control the descent of the Dragon capsule softly into the Atlantic Ocean. And while that vehicle that you see on the pad looks like a typical Crew Dragon spacecraft from the outside, if you had a look inside, you'll see that the interiors have been stripped down, and there it is, we do have a look inside for you. Um, the cabin has no interior panels, except for one on the ceiling, and there's no control panel in there for this test. Dragon's also outfitted with two seats that you see there, and sitting inside those seats, we have two anthropomorphic test devices. <laughs> what, no cool acronym? I'll just call them test devices. We have enough acronyms, John. <laughs> <laughs> While the test devices do not have any sensors on them today, the seats they're sitting on are instrumented. We'll be able to measure the loads on the seat to ensure that there are no unexpected issues in this stressing test case. We've also made some other modifications to the Dragon interior for today's test. That's right. Um, there will be three cargo racks with some assortment of ballast or cargo bags and no floor. Now below where the floor would be, there will be an assortment of mass simulators in place of the life support components and some other equipment that's down there when we have crew aboard. Now the test today will look a lot like a normal Falcon launch for the first minute and a half. We'll fly until Falcon 9 reaches a predetermined velocity. This will occur about 84 seconds into flight, and that happens at approximately 20 kilometers up. Once we reach the required velocity, Dragon will then trigger an escape. Now as a reminder, the ground is not commanding this abort. It's up to the onboard computers to determine when to trigger the launch escape and do all the functions afterward. Once Dragon does trigger the launch escape, the first event will be commanding Falcon 9 to shut down its nine Merlin engines. Now, as Marie and I mentioned earlier, Dragon will then separate from the Falcon using its eight Super Draco engines firing for about eight seconds. That carries Dragon capsule with the trunk up and away from Falcon. Now, once they finish firing the Super Dracos, we coast, we jettison the trunk at Apogee, we reorient the capsule to come back for entry into the Earth's atmosphere. We deploy about two minutes after Apogee, the drogue chutes, and about a minute after that, the four main parachutes will be released. Dragon will then splash down softly in the Atlantic Ocean, about 35 kilometers offshore. Now when Dragon separates, we no longer have that smooth aerodynamic shape on top of the rocket. So the supersonic Falcon is going to be exposed to strong aerodynamic forces in the upper atmosphere. So we expect those aerodynamic forces will cause Falcon to start to tumble. Our simulations show that the Falcon will likely break apart due to the tumbling, instead of having the destruct system triggered and destroying the rocket. So now again, this entire test will take less than 10 minutes from the time Falcon 9 lifts off until Dragon splashes down. But Marie, once we splash down, the work's not over yet. Right, it's just beginning for the recovery team. We have a lot of things happening very rapidly in that first 10 minutes, and the recovery operation takes quite a bit longer. It'll be similar to the pad abort test, uh, but it will happen slightly farther down range in the Atlantic Ocean. So after splashdown, recovery teams will already be standing by for range approval to enter and clear that hazardous area. And if all goes nominally, SpaceX could have fully recovered Dragon back onto its recovery ship approximately two hours after splashdown. Keep in mind though, if this were to happen during an actual flight with crew on board, rescuing them would be the number one objective, of course, and recovering Dragon would be a secondary operation. So if that were to happen, an elite military rescue team would deploy at a moment's notice. They're part of the U.S. Air Force's Detachment 3, or they have this really great nickname, the Guardian Angels, which is very appropriate. They would jump from military air aircraft. There's a photo of that happening there where they would deploy their own parachutes to gently reach the water. And from there, they would help the crew out of the capsule and then onto a life raft to wait for a larger ship. Now, this is not just any life raft. There, it has a cover that they can put over the top to protect them from the elements. And it's also equipped with food, water, and medical supplies, enough to last for days if needed. 
This would be, of course, a worst case scenario. It's one that we don't expect to happen. But of course, what do we do when we're preparing to fly crew? We always plan for the worst. So this is something that NASA, SpaceX, and the Department of Defense have rehearsed together over and over so that we're ready for anything. And the SpaceX recovery team is also keeping an eye out for Falcon 9. As we mentioned earlier, Falcon 9 is expected to break up over the water. We've got a dedicated team of SpaceX recovery personnel who will be staged and ready to begin recovering debris shortly after breakup. Well, the clock's kicking down rapidly. We're just over T minus two minutes and 14 seconds from liftoff. You've seen the crew access arm, it's back. That was retracted away from Dragon at T minus 42 minutes. A few minutes after that, Dragon launch escape system was armed just before we began loading propellant onto the Falcon 9. So if an unplanned situation arose right now, Dragon would perform an escape. Now currently the engines are chilled in for launch on the Falcon. The Dragon spacecraft is waiting for liftoff. We have retracted and you can see in the video the strong back is moved away just about two degrees in rapid readiness for liftoff. We have also finished loading liquid oxygen onto both the stages so the Falcon 9 is just about ready. The large white cloud you see coming off of the side we're venting down the pressure from the liquid oxygen supply lines in the strong back in preparation for launch. The last uh, event you're going to hear Start up at one minute when the computers take over and the launch director go at 30 seconds. And we're coming right up on that in about 15 seconds now will be just a minute from liftoff. And Falcon 9 is, as you just heard, is moving into those final stages of the final countdown for the in-flight abort test today. Um, so far, weather's looking okay. We're hoping it's gonna continue to cooperate and the range is green for launch. Now, if for some reason we scrub today, we will shift to our backup launch window, which is tomorrow at the same time. Again, this is just a test. We're fully expecting Falcon 9 to break up, so don't be alarmed if you see that happening live. And with that, let's listen in now. We're just 45 seconds from the final countdown. FTS is armed. Go for launch. Minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition, lift off. Simplify, aim high. Go Falcon, go Dragon. Vehicle is pitching down range. T plus 30 seconds, Falcon 9 with the Crew Dragon capsule is heading east from pad 39A. Everything looking good right now. As we get ready for max dynamic pressure, we Stage are now throttling down. down the first stage engines on Falcon, Falcon power 9. Telemetry nominal. Everything continues to look good. We're approaching the period of maximum dynamic pressure. Vehicle is supersonic and passing through maximum dynamic pressure. You've heard we're supersonic, we're through max Q. We're getting ready now to throttle the engines back up on the first stage. Stage one, throttle up. There's the call out. Okay, the major activity coming up in just over 10 seconds. Shut down and drag an escape from the Falcon 9. Miko. Dragon launch escape initiated. Dragon's away. And you can hear some really loud uh, cheering in the room. Okay, you just saw a bright flash there. It looks like Falcon that may be Falcon 9 breaking up. We've got some loud cheers um, here in Hawthorne. The, the folks that just watched live the Dragon separate. The next milestone we have coming up at two minutes, 25 seconds, um, we're expecting to see the trunk jettison. So that claw that connects the trunk to the capsule is going to separate, allowing Dragon to uh, separate from the trunk. 
That's coming up in 15 seconds. And we do have the report, loss of telemetry from Falcon 9, first stage. And there you just saw the trunk jettison again, some really loud cheers here in Hawthorne, California. This test is looking great so far. Nice view from the back of the Dragon capsule. We're also trying to see if we get the view there on the right-hand side from the aircraft that's orbiting the area. Now the Dragon control system is now going to be reorienting the capsule. We're at a high altitude where the aerodynamics are negligible. So we're going to use the small Draco thrusters on the Dragon capsule to reorient it. That gets it in a position with a heat shield down to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and then later to deploy the Drogue parachutes. Now those Drogue chutes, we expect to uh, get confirmation that those have deployed at T plus four minutes and 48 seconds. So we've got just a little bit of breathing room before we hear that happen. Those parachutes are protected during ascent, on orbit, and re-entry by a panel that's up near the nose cone of the capsule. So we're going to jettison the panel, then the mortars will fire to deploy those two drogue chutes. Again, that's coming up in just over a minute at T plus 4 minutes and 48 seconds. Now those drogue chutes, when we see those come out, those will open, those will come out before the main parachutes. That, those drogue parachutes are uh, what we use to begin to decelerate the Dragon capsule in preparation for splashdown. We understand we're getting into the drogue deploy envelope on the Dragon capsule. We expect that will happen when Dragon is at about 20,000 feet. About 15 seconds to drogue, drogue shoot deploy. And there they are. Drogue shoots are out. Again, some major cheering going on here as every stage of this test unfolds. Now we're going to be getting ready for the main shoots to deploy. Now main chutes will be coming up fairly quickly. There are four main parachutes. These are the newest Mark III parachutes. They're each 116 feet in diameter. We deploy them about two kilometers above sea level, 6,500 feet above the Atlantic Ocean. We're getting good views from the Dragon and the airplane, showing the two drogue chutes. Now we're just waiting for the main parachutes to be deployed very shortly. And we have the view from a different camera on Dragon showing the four main parachutes. Now they are deployed in a reefed condition. That means we're keeping them fairly shut to avoid shocks. And now we're slowly opening up the four parachutes. Great views coming okay. off of the Dragon camera on the left. And we can also see the four parachutes from the airplane on the right. That is a really cool view. Nice view of the orange and white parachutes as they're opening up into the second position. And they're going to fully open. From fully open, we'll be descending about 20 to 25 feet per second down to the Atlantic. So from that 6,500 foot altitude, it's going to take us a few minutes to splash down. Also right now, now that the mains are out, a sequence is performed on the Dragon, which will reorient the crew seats into a splash down position give them a little better angle to take the uh, slow bounce as we hit the ocean. Now, Maria, I talked about uh, the parachutes came out initially at a reef condition. That's fairly standard. They come out not fully open. That way, they're minimizing the shock on the parachutes. We're also minimizing the shock on the capsule. Again, we want to give a smooth ride to the crew as they are coming back through the Earth's atmosphere. Right. Now, the parachutes are located behind a door that's at the bottom of the capsule. It's below the crew hatch. 
So Dragon commands the door to release, and as you saw in the video, the drug parachutes pull the door away, and that pulls the four main parachutes out. Now these are the new Mark III parachutes. We've completed here at SpaceX over 80 tests of that parachute system, including 10 multi-parachute tests of this particular upgraded parachute design over the last few months to demonstrate that the design is ready for flight. And we are about, we're just inside two minutes of when we expect to see a splashdown. The recovery teams are already out there in the Atlantic Ocean standing by, uh, ready with fast bo boats to begin their initial approach to Dragon. Again, we mentioned this before, uh, but the recovery operation, we expect to take a couple of hours. I've heard a call out, we're below 500 meters. And we expect when Dragon splashes down, it's going to be roughly 32 kilometers offshore. Again, we're looking at a live view. So far, uh, all things have appeared to go nominal for this test. All things looking great so far. We saw the four main parachutes deploy. You're looking at them now, uh, fully open. And we are coming up on about a minute until splashdown. I think we may have heard a call out of 100 meters to go. Yeah, I just heard that too. Yeah. Now those four parachutes are actually going to be released from the capsule after splashdown and they'll be recovered too. And we are down. Down a little bit early, in fact. And there you can see the recovery boat beginning to approach instantly. I'm going to try to talk a little bit louder so you can hear me over the folks here. Uh, this has been a really exciting thing to see because uh, we had the weather we weren't really sure if the weather was going to cooperate. Um, we were trying to weigh, you know, is it favorable for launch, but also is it favorable for recovery because they really have to watch the height of those waves um, in order to do this operation. Um, that, that fast boat is, is just off screen now, but there's four fast boats out there in the area to begin, again, that initial approach to Dragon. Um, the recovery operation from here takes about two hours, but all in all, this looks like a really great test. Yeah, a lot of fun watching the Dragon come down. We had great views from the onboard camera in particular. Now I think this camera is from our Go Searcher recovery ship, which is also the tender for the fast boat. You saw one of them headed out there. And you can also see it looks still a little choppy, so you understand we were kind of on the edge of the weather conditions out in the splashdown area. But they assessed the, uh, the boat data, the buoy data, looked at the forecast and said we were go. And while we took two and a half hours to get here, we finally got here and it was great. And that's the summary for today. It looks like right now a great test. Visually, everything happened. Falcon 9, you saw the liftoff. We had kind of a long view from the uh, camera. Dragon did shut down the nine Merlin 1D engines and separate. We did see the flash as the Falcon 9 uh, came apart, as predicted, no surprise there. Dragon, we saw a great view as it got to Apogee. It deployed the trunk, separating it, reoriented. Then the drug chutes came out, the main chutes came out, and then we just waited for that nice soft splashdown in the Atlantic Ocean. And we saw, and it looks like we just lost the view um, from out there on the ship, but you couldn't really see much from that particular angle. Um, again, that recovery operation is going to take a couple of hours, so we're not going to stay on the air for the duration of that. Um, but we are going to be back for a news conference um, coming up at 11.30 Eastern time this morning. That would be, let me do the math real quick, 8.30 uh, Pacific time. We're going to hear from NASA and SpaceX leaders about their initial thoughts on this test that you just saw. Of course, everything looked fantastic, but there's going to be a lot of data to dig into. They're going to also collect those parachutes, get a lot of data from that, and then um, see what the next steps are on the path to Demo 2, when, of course, we're going to be launching NASA astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley. So stay tuned for that news conference. It will be carried live on NASA TV. If you're watching on the web, just tune to uh, nasa.gov forward slash live so you can see that coverage. Again, that's 8.30 Pacific time, 11.30 Eastern. Thanks so much for joining us for this morning's test.